How do I get people to listen to what I have to say? Well, Neff, I'm sure throughout your life you've felt unheard. So let's run through this. What you see in front of you here is human design. I won't bore you with jargon. So let's get right into this experience. How can I get people to hear what I'm saying? Well, you are a projector and you see right there on the screen, it says strategy is wait for the invitation. Well, the thing is, is that as a projector, it means that you are here to wait to be invited or recognized for your awesome. But what does that even mean? Wait for the invitation. So throughout our whole life, we've been conditioned to be something that we're not. When we grow up, we're sat down in a school or by authoritative figures and told to be still and listen. And then we go out into the real world and we say we're free, but we have to listen to the TOS of life. And, you know, we do change ourselves for our careers. So waiting for the invitation, what that means is firstly, wait. And it's actually saying, wait to decondition all that crap that we've been taught as to how we should act in a particular situation or wait to be recognized for your awesome or wait for the invitation. Okay, so it can flat out be like, yo, well, Neff, do you want to do this? But your body is going to be able to tell you in an instantaneous kind of way that <laughs> you should or should not. You have these very subtle bodily cues that will either maybe you, you might walk towards something when it is healthy for you. You might physically be repulsed by something and walk away from it without even consciously seeing yourself or consciously put yourself into that position. You're, you're just moving away because for some reason your body feels like it's sleazy, it's sleazy and skeezy, not healthy for you. So being recognized for your awesome is really like, oh, well, you're so funny. Oh, well, you're so good at what you do. Oh, well, your hair is something else. You know, when somebody recognizes that awesome within you, that is the same thing as waiting for the invitation. And when people recognize something about you, then you got them. You got them. Um, so the thing is though, is that regarding being recognized for your awesome is that unless you recognize that, you know, oh, your hair is awesome or oh, those things about you that people say you feel they're true. You're not going to deem they're true and you're just going to like wipe them off until you really do feel they're true. But as a projector, you are a guide, you're the master master of what master of what it is that we see here in front of you so how do i get people to hear what i have to say waiting for the invitation so you are the master you are the guide being a projector and waiting for the invitation it really protects yourself from making decisions or commitments that really weren't correct for you. Why would you bother spending your energy on something that you may not even have the energy to commit to? You are an instantaneous being. You understand what is worth being risky for. And just because it's safe for you to be risky and instantaneous, it doesn't mean that it's actually safe for people around you to be um, instantaneous or risky. So keep that in mind. And also people might notice that you're under the weather before you do. And also people might feel the sense of coziness and cushiness around you. And all of those things that I just said came from these places here. But yes, you are a person who is here to wait for the invitation. Instead of just blurting out what it is that you want to say. When you are asked what it is that you are a master of, people are going to listen to you for days. 
Let me give you an example. My brother, he enjoys the mushroom realm, not for psychedelic reasons, but he just enjoys learning about mushrooms and their healing properties. And if you mention anything about a forest, he will clearly go into talking about mushrooms and everybody starts rolling their eyes and they're like, oh my God, not again. Why is he talking about this? So I bet that in your life, well, when you've spoken, you have felt a lot of that when that people aren't interested in your passions, that um, what you have to say isn't important to people, but it is important to the correct people. So um, my brother, um, he is also a fisherman and everybody's super curious about, you know, his fisherman job. And we ask him, yo, how's it going? How's the weather? How's, are you seasick? How's your skin? And everybody could listen to him talk for days because we recognize his mastery for being a great fisher person. And because we asked him about it, we could listen to him for days. So that's what it's really talking about because my brother's a projector too. So Will, you are this person who is this instantaneous being. Your body is going to give you these indications, very subtle whispers to tell you what is correct for you or not. And you really should listen to those because it is said that if you don't listen to those whispers, it'll actually go against your health. I'm not a doctor. There's a lot of different things that we could talk about here. We could actually talk about your chart for days. But if you start making correct decisions for yourself, you know, wait to be recognized for your awesome, wait for the invitation. I'm not saying disengage with life. If you feel like doing something, do it. And you're more than welcome to disengage with it when you get there. You don't have to commit to it. But what it is, is that we're deconditioning all the crap that we've been taught. So to make a decision, just wait to be recognized for your awesome as you are just working on your mastery of being who you are and your instantaneous in the moment will give you that answer that is correct for you, those whispers in the moment. When you begin to use your energy correctly or make decisions that are correct for yourself, then your profile begins to emerge. Your profile is your behavioral costume in life how you see yourself how others see you so in my opinion this is the most resilient profiles of them all you are a person who is here to investigate to research and to feel like that thing that you're researching is solid beneath your feet before you kind of talk to other people about it and you kind of trial and error it, you break uh, bonds and make bonds, you, you see the holes in the system, you investigate them. So you're here to investigate and maybe even bump into life. You're a very resilient person. Without people like you investigating what it is that is needed in the world to have that thing be more strong or you know, the, the holes taken out of the system. We need people like you. You are resilient. The Leaning Tower of Pisa would be crumbled by now. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, it would just be no tower anymore, not just leaning. <laughs> but yes, people may call you clumsy. You may call yourself clumsy. Um, the thing is, is that you are meant to bump into things and that's okay. And if outsiders looking in or, you know, just talking, they'll say, what's wrong with you breaking that thing again, but screw them. Because what they should be saying is, oh, well, look at that uh, error you found in the system again. Good job, buddy. And uh, let's see how we can fix it together. Let's start researching together. 
So you are a person who researches and finds the holes in the system and really like makes things more foundational. All right. Now, once again, when you're acting yourself, your true self, when you are making correct decisions for you, when your body says do it and you do it, then you are allowing your purpose to flow through you. Your purpose is your incarnation cross, the full thing. And let's just say your body said, don't do it. And you do it anyways, well, you just might end up bitter or um, in a human design realm, it says you might even end up hurt if you don't follow those little whispers that are being given to you. You know, those little whispers that say, don't do it before you jump off that cliff and, you know, you break an arm. <laughs> so, yes, when you are following your true self, waiting for the invite, waiting to be recognized for your awesome as you're just working on your awesome, doing you, you're going to be recognized for that and people are going to approach you and it's then from there that you are going to say in that moment if you're going to do it or not there's no pre-planning needed there's no one two three step plan that you need because your spleen's going to keep you safe and allow you to move in the correct direction now if you follow yourself, your profile, your incarnation cross begins to emerge. But if you do the opposite, you'll end up bitter. Well, that seems pretty awesome that if you just wait for your awesome to be recognized on what you're already great at, your your purpose in life is just going to flow through you without getting your brain involved. It's pretty freaking awesome. You know what's great about this is that we haven't even gone into all of those little geometrical shapes and those colors over in the side of that chart there. So let's just move into that for a moment and talk about what those things in front of you are saying. Firstly, these geometrical shapes are called centers. Some are colored in and some are white. So the colored in ones are called defined or definition. In this definition that you see here is you. It's what you put out into the world, whether you are conscious of it or not. The white stuff in the chart. I mean, it's still an aspect of who you are, but it's just not consistent. Like the stuff that's colored in here. So we don't make decisions based on the inconsistent stuff in your chart. All right. What does that crap even mean that I just said? That's a lot of jargon. I know. So you have a fixed way of understanding what correct timing is for you. And you do understand adrenaline, timing, pressure in a fixed way for yourself. Up here, oh, that's the root center. Uh, up here is uh, the spleen center understanding what is correct for you, safe for you, healthy for you, whether it be support systems, people, places, or things. Up here, this is called the G Center. It's about your connections, your role in life, your direction. And um, up here, this is the Throat Center. It's about metamorphosis, transformation. Up here is the Ajna. It's about conceptualization. The thing is, though, is that you'll notice that all of these centers that I just not, uh, mentioned, they have a little line that makes them connected. That's how each end is defined. You'll see that line here. You'll see that line here. Those lines are called channels. Also, defining who you are. A consistent aspect of who you are, of what you put out into the world. So before we go and talk about those channels, I want to talk about those centers and synthesize them together. You are a person who has a fixed way of understanding what direction you are going in. 
because you are able to conceptualize what it is that you need to transform and you'll do it in a very instantaneous kind of way or in a very healthy way for yourself. So let's move on to these channels here. So this here, the 38 running to the 28. This is the channel of struggle, a design of stubbornness. Now, just because you have the channel of struggle, it doesn't mean that you're here to struggle in life. No, what it actually means is that you understand what is worth struggling for, what is worth fighting for, what's worth being risky for, and you understand that in a conscious way because the colors are black there and the black colors here are conscious to you. So the thing is, though, is that about this particular channel is that it's deaf to what other people have to say. So if they say, oh, this thing's worth struggling for, and you're like, is it though? <laughs> um, so you are deaf to what is not correct for you because this is an individual channel. And you're not supposed to be mutated by others and what others have to say about this. So because it is an individual channel, there is a chance that you have a possibility of melancholy here that turns on and turns off whenever it decides whether you're acting correctly or not. It's not because you're acting incorrectly or acting correctly. No, it just is. It's, it's just this biochemical process that happens and it feels melancholic, like this emptiness, this ugh, or what it really could feel like for you here is that, you know, is life really worth struggling for anymore? And that's pretty serious. So if you do have those deep clinical thoughts, make sure you go talk to someone about it because yeah, life surely is worth struggling for, worth fighting for because once those melancholic feelings go away, I want to tell you that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. When you're feeling those melancholic things, I'm going to be all hippy dippy and go uh, religious here and say, uh, from creation stories, there was some, there, there was nothing. And then there was something. And that's what this feeling is, is that there was nothing feelings, emotions. And then there was something you know, this creative aspect that just popped out of nowhere. So that's what it's talking about is that you are actually undergoing a very transformative, creative process when you feel that melancholic way. So there's nothing that you need to do about it. There's nothing that you need to force because it does feel really uncomfortable to have that melancholic feeling within you, of course. So you just want to do things to try to make it go away. There's nothing you need to do to try to make that feeling go away. It's a biochemical feeling. It's going to happen on its own. So coming back to what this channel is again, this is a channel of struggle, a design of being stubborn or a design of stubbornness. So people might call you stubborn. <laughs> but the thing is, though, is that when you are being struck, uh, being stubborn or struggling for what is correct for you, that's actually when you are going to be an inspirational being very empowering. All right, let's move up to this channel right here. This channel here, the 10 running to the 20. This is the channel of awakening, a design of commitment to higher principles. So it's really about this behavior of self in the now. You are unconscious to this because it is red. You're not very aware of these things, but you would be aware of it if you, um, look over time regarding these aspects of who you are. Um, being in the now, uh, contemplating, awakening, really acting your true self in the now, because when you are acting your true self, once again, in your self-absorbed process, this is when you are going to be that inspirational being. So keep on being you. Get that behavior of yourself correct for yourself through acting correct for you, waiting for those invitations, waiting for what your spleen has to say. Right here, running from the 11 
to the 56. This is the channel of curiosity, a design of a searcher. So this is unconscious to you as well. You are a person who has these ideas. You're a curious searcher. You enjoy peace. You enjoy being stimulated. You're the wanderer. You have something to say because you have all these ideas because you have these stimulating ideas. But once again, you need to wait for the awesome that you are to be recognized. Now, the collective is only going to recognize what is worth struggling for and what it is worth uh, being in the now for when you are acting your true self, your purest self. That is when the collective is going to find you inspirational and empowering. That is when they are going to be able to see the those ideas as inspirational. See them as what is worth being risky for or what is worth being instantaneous for. Now, you are a projector. There's actually three different types of projectors and you are an energy projector. Long story short, because you're an energy projector, my dad's actually an energy projector and he may not know when enough's enough. So let's talk about this. When you are acting your true self, I'm gonna sum this all up together. You are a person who does have this fixed timing of when and what you know is correct to struggle for. You have these great ideas that are that will stimulate the collective, but you just have to act yourself in the now, and that is when you're going to be transformative and mutative, inspirational and empowering by just following your spleen, by being that master and by being that guide. I said earlier that when you follow yourself, then you are going to allow your true behavioral costume to emerge and allow your purpose to flow through you. Well, what happens if the opposite happens? What if you're like living your life out opposite as to what your true self can be? <laughs> well, that's when you see these white centers pop up when you're acting not self, when you're not living your true self, you'll see yourself live a lot in these centers. But because you're split definition, you might live out here or you might live out here. And I would say that it, oh, I don't know what it would be. Maybe you might feel like you need more skills in life or yeah. So needing more skills, that is just you feeling conditioned. So what skills are needed for you? You'll know in the moment what is correct for you to take you in the correct direction. So there's nothing you need to overthink about your skills. So remember, I told you that these white places in your chart are inconsistent. So let's talk about these centers. They're actually some pretty big hitters, these white centers. Just because they're white, it doesn't mean you're broken. Everybody has whiteness or openness or undefinedness in their chart. Everybody does. So let's run that through these one by one. I said that you're an energy projector and you may not know when enough's enough. So as an energy projector, these three centers here are going to really play a huge part in your not selfness. Too much jargon. Sorry, but let's start up here. Up here, this is this is called the head, and this is where you may feel you have to be inspirational, or you may need to be inspired. So you may also answer questions that don't matter to you. You may end up being the person who gets all the work poured onto them. If you don't know the answer, I'm sure you might be able to find it, eh? 
but that's not self. You are a person who is meant to flow through what inspiration is by being yourself. There's nothing you need to do except for be yourself to be inspirational. There's nothing that you need to overdo, overcommit, overwork, overanswer, nothing. Your brain's probably lit up a lot, but it's okay. Just allow those thoughts to pass through and see what, see what sticks or not. What ideas make their way into your direction of life? Okay. So right here, this is called the sacral, and this is when a person may not know when enough is enough. You may go too far. And my dad typically has uh, troubles with, well, he smoked for a long time, and then he ate after that, and then he walks a lot when he goes on a diet, and then when he goes off his diet, he eats a lot, And but his diet consists of walking 22 kilometers a day. I know you're American, I'm sorry. That's this, that's a half marathon. I think that's 13 miles. So he just didn't know when enough is enough because he was just not following his true energy. So not knowing when enough is enough could be in a multitude of ways. Um, it could come up in your life. You may not know when enough is enough regarding inspiration or trying to be inspirational. Going like the Energizer Bunny, go, 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 and ending up burnt out because you've committed too much. But that's not you. You have this limited reserved amount of energy and you might feel all cozy and stuff and other people's... Um, presence but when you leave people presence you just be like oh my god I don't even have the energy for that why did I Ugh, damn it so let's talk about this here this is the solar plexus and when a person is acting not self here so they're making decisions against their own energy they'll try to put this mask on I put this mask on because I didn't want to be bullied oh they don't know the real me. They're bullying this mask. When you are acting not self here, this is where you'll avoid confrontation or truth. So, oh, that's a great haircut you got. <laughs> or, you know, where those little white lies come up because you just don't want to rock the boat. Um, personally, I don't enjoy female based parties because they ask me questions that don't matter. Like, when are you having a baby? When are you getting married? so annoying i don't want to tell the old ladies to fuck off so i drop my gifts off and i run away because it's not right it's rude it's not their fault they want to ask the same questions at those females parties <sighs> anyways let's put that together you may not know when enough is enough regarding being inspirational or regarding the mask that you've put on so um Let's go to this one here, though. This is wide open, just like your head. There's no colors attached to it at all, which means you can actually experience the full depth of this um, center. Um, when you are acting not self, you will feel like maybe you're not enough. Maybe you'll feel like you have to prove yourself. Maybe you feel like you're not deserving or not loved. But those are not true. You are loved. You are deserving. There's nothing that you have to prove even to yourself. Um, maybe when you worked, when you were younger and there was a shift to be picked up and it wasn't directed at you, it was towards the whole team. You're like, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. Because you might be the one who felt like you had to prove yourself because you didn't walk, want to rock the boat. Because you need to prove that you could go, go, go and be that inspirational person on the team that could answer everybody's questions. Once again, you have nothing to prove. You're amazing. You're awesome. You are enough. And I'm not just saying that because you're famous. I'm sure you felt a whole variety of that throughout your life. But you are loved. You're awesome. You have nothing to prove. 
You have nothing to prove. You have nothing to prove. Now, you also may feel like you have to control things, whether that be materialism. You might feel like you have to control your emotions, control how much you do, control how inspirational you are. Maybe you, I'm not a doctor, and maybe you might find yourself with some uh, thyroid, gall, stomach, or heart issues because you've been pushing yourself so, so hard that you're just burnt out now. All right, so I bet you get paid a lot of money to put on this mask to be an inspirational being to go around acting like a chicken with its head cut off, just doing a bunch of things. I bet you're bitter doing that though. So what you really need to do to feel that success in your life is to wait to be recognized for your awesome. To be recognized or wait for the invitation. Like I said, it's not to disengage with life. It's not to uh, sit around with your thumb up your pooper. Just be this instantaneous being in the now because your correct behavior in the now will tell you what's worth struggling for, what's worth being instantaneous for, what's worth researching and what's worth putting your time into to have that trial and error to have those bonds made and broken it's gonna allow a lot less bitterness in your life when you stop trying to prove yourself or top tr stop trying to be in control of your inspirational being or your answers that you have for people stop trying to prove yourself that you can go 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 or stop trying to prove that you are in control of your emotions or you know prove that you can be this particular being i mean i am a content creator i have this open too I understand what it is. You have to change yourself in order to be a content creator because it's TOS of life, right? Otherwise, you'll just be canceled. <laughs> I was just talking to my son last night about all the things that I can't say online that I used to say, and I had to change myself because of this. All right, I'm going to wrap up there. So who are you? Um, well, Neff, you are a person who understands the correct timing of what is correct for you that will lead you in a proper direction in the now for what is correct for your behavior of self because you have these wonderful ideas. You do have this curiosity about you. You are a searcher who is going to research and find those holes in the system because you are a person who is going to transform and mutate what is around you because you're not meant to be mutated by others. When you are acting not self, when you are feeling bitter, you'll see yourself trying to avoid confrontation or truth or trying to prove yourself, prove that you are a person who is able to keep up with everybody else or prove that you might be this extremely inspirational being. Remember, in order to avoid that bitterness, you just have to be yourself. And that's awesome because guess what? You are already you. Stop trying to be that person over there. All right, so my name is Katie Lynn. This was a great experience. If you want your experience like Will Neff, Will Neff did not ex ask me to do this. I just thought it'd be fun because this person is a very fun caricature when I watch them do all of their streams and all of their hosting. So I hope you enjoyed this. This particular experience is a $250 experience and it is a private experience and it's uh, about an hour and a half long and it is more drawn out and it is more explained. 